Okay. I can only have two reservations. Oh. Okay. All right. Um, let's start. So um, last week, it's very important contents we covered. So this is where we left, if I remember correct. Oops. How are you today? OK. Remember what we were talking about Wednesday last week? What were we talking about? What were we talking about Wednesday? What did you learn? Source sync. sync relationship. And what about source sync relationship then? And different priorities. Different priorities. Yeah, to allocate the carbohydrate or sugar produced by the leaves. Right? And can you name typical sinks? Fruit, leaf, flowers. Leaves, okay, leaves could be sources, right? What's the occasion leaves can be sinks and sources? Young versus old, yeah. Young leaves are typically young, you know, growing like a shoot tip um, or unfolded leaves. Those are typically sink rather than source. As soon as they are unfolded, start, you know, the maximum photosynthesis, then they are turning into source. So what specifically determines whether it is sink or source? The leaf is a good example. It's just the age or what? Can you define a little bit better way? Sink and source? It would be like the phase growth, like vegetative versus like a juvenile versus uh, like reproductive. Yeah, so that's age, right? But if you look at the one specific leaf, from teeny tiny primordia stage and start, you know, developing large and visible and then unfold and then getting old and die. So it's a whole life cycle of that one particular leaf. Um, obviously, the beginning, they are considered, or this particular leaf is considered as sink, right? And then change to source and then stays at source, again back to sink. So what is defining sink and source in this one leaf? Caitlin. So whether, so that Caitlin is saying whether they are doing photosynthesis or not effectively. Yeah. So what do you mean exactly by effectively doing photosynthesis? Okay. So, but it's also uh, being able to do photosynthesis. However, as the leaf bulb grows older, it's less effective to be able to conduct or to do photosynthesis and to make the leaves into sinks because the plant still needs to use energy to make sure that it's maintaining the local leaf cycle. I'm sorry, a healthy leaf. So you you are basically saying if leaves are growing, they are. Um, how, how about photosynthesis is very high, and then they can, you know, growing but still, you know, giving some allocation to other leaves or fruits. Then would that be sink or source? Yeah. So, so how do we um, define sink and source? Back, 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 back. 
Where is it? Oh, where is it? I missed that. Pro M. Oh, here it is. See the wording I used? Source is a net exporter or producer of photo assimilate. Net producer. Okay, so that means if you look at the balance, it's pretty much balance based. Producing more than transported out. Then that is a source. If it is, because for example, um, old leaves still doing photosynthesis, right? But they may not be doing enough to sustain the needed metabolisms. And then in that case, even though they are still doing photosynthesis, they are um, sink. Okay, so that's the sink and source de definition is based on the carbon balance in that leaf or in that organ. Okay, so um, go back, 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 back. All right, so um, and this one is showing the leaf. Um, different locations of the leaves, and then also different species, and which direction the um, photoassimilates or sugars are translocated to. And then it's quite interesting, um, um, those are the four different um, species, and tomato case, um, so you see relative to where it is located. For example, this leaf, um, Probably the the strong attracting uh, sinks are upwards. Therefore, if you look at this leaf and then see the allocation of carbohydrates, um, upward allocation is greater than downward allocation, and that's something sort of you don't think because you might think sugar is always coming down, but no. Um, depending on where the sinks are located relative to that leaf. It goes upward or downward. And why you can do that against the gravity? Because it's a pressure, you know, driven, um, you know, allocation, right? We learned that in, uh, 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 uh. right here, okay? The um, pressure potential difference, that's the driving force in the sugar movement in the phloem, right? And that is also explained by water potential, one of the key concepts you learned or you reviewed last, actually two weeks ago, right? So the water moving in, where the sucrose concentration is high, which is um, the site to um, load the sugar into the phloem, and then just push down or push up, right? to the location where the uh, unloading is going on. So that sucrose concentration is lower, right? All right, so so that's, um, that's a quick review. Okay, so back to the thing. All right, so, um, so soybeans, obviously, um, sink is located um, in the ground. Same thing for potato. Therefore, you can see that a lot of allocation going downward, lower leaves, and uh, something like wheat, big sink in the top, um, seems to be pretty much upward for upper leaves, but lower leaves seems to be lower. So it's, it's a one example you can, you can just consider. Don't, you know, take this as always, always this. But the message of this particular um, difference is direction, allocation, is determined by the location and strength of the sink relative to the source. Okay? All right. Okay, so this is uh, cultural practices um, described in terms of sink and source, uh, and then also the influence. Hmm? You have a question, Ricardo? Uh, this is a residual slides from last Wednesday. Do you need one? Yes, okay, let me let me give you my all right. Actually, 
I have a bunch of notes, so I can't give you this. So, um, uh, but that's in the detail. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so um, this is this is a sort of blank stairs, and I want you to fill it out. Um, so the leaf pruning is removal of, of sink or source. Sink to increase what? What's the purpose of leaf removal? Pruning. I think there are three potential ways to answer this. Removing leaf is removing sink, right, to increase. So if you remove the sink, yeah, different allocation, and you're hoping to allocate more onto remaining, remaining well, fruits, fruits. Yeah, so the yield and growth. Right, so removal of sink or removal of leaves that are considered no longer as source, right? That are considered no longer as source to increase growth rate or yield. So yeah. When, when a grower selectively manages ground, how do they decide? Yeah. Good question, which was not answered. So um, Justin asked how growers decide which leaves to remove. Um, they they removed. Um, I mean, they removed basically based on sort of suggested practice. Um, tomato crop, high wire typically suggest that 12 to 14 leaves to remain in the canopy. Why is not answered. Why is coming actually from Dutch growers' practice, and maybe a good study there, but we have such a high light, right, in the summer and the winter. Would, would, you know, should that still the best practice? We don't know. So we talked about this topic when we talked about the light penetration, remember? We all went there and then measured the light, and then we actually discovered how low the light could be at lower uh, level. And then once you know that uh, extinction coefficient, remember, you can predict what is the light level at given light intensity, right? That is one important information to decide. And then also, knowing that sink and source relationship, and then you want to have leaf nearby fruit so that you know the distance doesn't, I mean, the shorter distance is better for allocating that leaf. So it's a combination of the two need to be um, re-examined in this climate, but uh, nobody <coughs> had that before. And then I, I'm hoping um, to do that next year. Finally, combining with um, uh, interlighting technology, because now you have lower, you know, canopy with um, LED lighting, right? And then how does it affect the pruning practice? And then how should the pruning pra practice be in a standard condition? So that more ecological and physiological analysis, how to do it. So I don't have the answer yet. Yeah, so, um, okay, so if I can summarize two comments. So um, Jessica was telling that it is very hard to determine which leaf, even though you, she is told it's gonna, it has to be 14 leaves. So what she does is based on the height, right, from the ground up approximately. And then, uh, um, uh, <laughs> Yannike, sorry. Yannike was telling that, um, uh, uh, you are telling that because of the uh, height of the greenhouse is very low, so it's also another factor to consider, right? So that fruits are not, or the leaves are not too low. So it's very challenging, yeah, basically. Okay, good, good. All right, so going further down, fruit pruning. You have fruit pruning also, right? So the fruit, prun pr fruit pruning is the removal of Sink, yeah, sink. Um, to increase. Allocate to the to, yes, what happens if you have more allocation to fruit? Yeah, bigger, bigger, 
bigger fruit. Yeah, so they increase the size of fruit. Okay, increase the size of fruit. Um, sometimes called topping or pinching. So basically, removal of apical meristem, shoot tip. What is that? Removal of sink or sauce? Sauce? Sink? Which one? Sink. Yeah, that's correct. Sink. Removal of sink to increase something. No, no, no. Sucker is uh, the last one. We are we are the one before. So the topping or um, pruning or um, pinching, the terminating the top. Oh yeah, that's true too. Yeah, yeah. Increase the blanching if you want to blanch, and that's more like in uh, ornamental floriculture species uh, or herbs. You know, basil. Uh, uh, so the, other than that, if it is tomato, removal of the sink, TJ? Yeah, remaining one. So allocation, increase allocation to the fruit. So this is typical practice to terminate the crop. Um, like tomato, vine crop, you you want to destroy, but you want to stop the vertical growth at that point. And then suckers come out, but you remove <laughs> the suckers also. And then so that all the you know, photosynthates produced by the remaining leaves are going to be the remaining fruit. And then finish those fruits by harvesting them. So that's a practice. Um, and then the last one is removal of, obviously, sink. Caitlin? Harvest deadline. You saw that two at the end of the crop. For, for example, you are planning to terminate this crop, mm -hmm. meaning this this group of plants. Yeah, I guess I'm just wondering like why you would want to terminate that group of plants if like you were gonna like put in new ones or like when 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 would you want to chop plants? Just because I know in research chopping plants is like a big problem in the arugula project, and so I was just wondering like when one would want to terminate the plants intentionally. Um. So. So, okay, the, your question contains actually two different kinds of questions. One is why growers want to terminate the crop and when, right? Yeah. Okay, so, so that one, um, basically, general practice in a year-round production is eight months to ten months production, okay? And then you want to plant the new crop as soon as you finish. Um, uh, so why why you can't grow you know the same plants for over two years or three years because the yield is declining, right? Because it's a, the stem is getting too long, and uh, the resistance right to to get all the nutrient and water going to the top is getting higher and higher. So the, the productivity declines to at the end. So growers figure out usually what, is, what makes sense, right? So, um, so that's why. And, uh, um, and then the timing also determined by that. And then I forgot what's the next. Oh, okay, that answered your question. Okay, good, good. Yeah, I don't, yeah, so, so um, and then uh, if you keep going, right, so that if, if you don't top, then the, the plants are continuously produce new flowers and new fruits, and those are not going to be harvestable within the timeline they have. So instead of letting those going and then waste, growers would decide to terminate so that remaining fruits are going to be in the timeline to move on, okay? Good, all right. And did I do the last one? Yeah, to increase growth, overall growth, or yield, or growth and yield, right? Because suckers, unless suckers are welcomed, um, like different crop production, um, unwelcomed or unnecessary, unnecessary suckers are pruned to allocate more carbohydrate to 
um, growing shoot tip or um, growing flower, fruits, so that growth is enhanced or fruit production is enhanced. Question, okay, Justin. So for yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a, I think that it's a good practice to adjust the timing, but it's not the sink source oriented practice, right? Yeah. Um, back to Justine's question, um, the stage of doing those, I think leaf pruning usually starts after the plants establish the uh, mature canopy, not gonna be young plants at all. Because uh, remember the penetration of light, it's pretty much LAI. So as soon as LAI is saturating, or not saturating, LAI and light, light intensity, um, and then as soon as light intensity or the use, use of light is saturating by high LAI, leaf area index, more leaf, and then use of light is saturating, then you start doing pruning, basically. Um, fruit pruning, um, as soon as you start seeing fruit, yeah, obvious. Suckers, as, as soon as you start seeing suckers, yeah. Because well, as a tomato example, you usually train the plants having one single stem. So everything coming out from the side shoots or from the, from the axil, you know, the, the, the base of the leaf, uh, it's going to be waste energy. But growers sometimes choose to grow out one or two suckers to increase the leaf area index when it is coming to summertime. Um, growers want to have more transpiring surface and the light intensity is high enough to do that. And then they would just manage the number of stems by doing that. So it's a very fine technique. Um, it's also developed in 